The Flatlanders need a store to sell their gems and more They need it really quick, Angular will do the trick Directives set the stage in your HTML page Controllers give your app the behavior that it lacks Write expressions so that you can add your data to the view And modules make connections with dependency injections You're a scripting connoisseur when shaping up with Angular JS You're watching Shaping Up with AngularJS. This is level two, where we're going to be talking about filters, more directives, and how to keep your code clean. To review some of the directives we've gone over, we've got ng-app, that's how we attach the application module to the page. We have ng-controller, that's how we attach a controller function to the page. We have ng-show and ng-hide to display or hide a section based on an expression. And we have ng-repeat, to repeat a section for each item in an array. Now jumping back into our current example, we've prettied up some of our code to use some Twitter bootstrap elements, but we're still doing the same thing, iterating through each of our products and printing it out to the screen. If we were to call this up in a browser, it might look something like this. Now you'll notice here that something doesn't quite look right with our dollar values. We're simply putting a dollar sign before the price, and one of our prices is two, so it's not showing the right number of decimal points. Luckily, Angular has a better way to deal with currency. We can use the currency filter in our price expression. Notice here, between these two calls, we have a pipe. The pipe says, take the result of the first expression and send the output into the second expression, which in this case is a filter. Currency will print out the proper dollar sign, localized, and will also give us the correct number of decimals. So now when we call up this page in our browser, we can see that our currency is properly formatted. Angular has a bunch of filters, and they follow this format where you take some data and you pipe that into a filter, sometimes even specifying options. For example, if we had a timestamp, we could pipe that into the date filter, specifying the format of the date we wanted. We can also specify a filter of uppercase or lowercase on a string. Next, we have the limit to filter, which will allow us to limit the number of characters in a string if we want. It's also really useful if we want to limit the number of items in an array, like if we only want to display the first three products. The order by filter will allow us to sort our products. In this case, if we wanted to sort our products from most expensive to least expensive, we would write pipe order by minus price. Without the minus, products would list in ascending order from cheapest to most expensive. Each of our products has a bunch of pictures that are associated with it, so we need to add that to our data set. So here you can see we now have an images property which contains a new array. Inside of that array, there are a series of image objects, each of which contains a full image and a thumbnail image. So to display the first image in a product, we might write product.images, specify the index, dot full. If we took that and put it as an expression inside the source attribute of an image tag, well, it wouldn't work. The browser tries to load the image before the expression evaluates. So to print out this image, we need to use the ng-source directive, like you see here. Then if we jump back into our browser, we can see that all the images are showing properly. Why don't you try using some filters and ng-source, and I'll see you in the next section.